I know exactly why you're here, and I'm ready to give you exactly what you want. I'm John Zadar. This is Monday, March 25th, and you're watching On Top and Hot, where we like to focus in on a hot penny stock. Now, I'm not just grabbing this stock out of a hat at the end of the day. I'm not bringing up a scan and grabbing one off the top of the list. No, I'm getting this out of the field. I am a day trader. I am out there all day from bell to bell looking for stocks under five bucks. Those are penny stocks and you can find those on every market. But I am particularly looking for a stock that has potential to share with you. And I've got one for you right now. This is Curl Technology Group, ticker KULR. Now, I really like this company. I think she's going to explode in growth as the EV market expands. They are in the EV sector, but the technology side of it, they help the lithium ion batteries to run properly, safely, and to contain problems when they do occur. Now, today the stock was hot. It ran over 100% before dipping back down and keeping some of those gains, but there was no catalyst today. We had a filing come out, but it wasn't exactly what I would call good news. Nonetheless, the stock jumped 100%. Well, it did that on the 14th as well. They had a news press come out and it bounced from 11 to 22 cents, came back down. She has changed her trend. She is starting to climb now, so we need to take a look at Curl. So Curl finished the day at about 32 and a half cents and she is about 55% gains today. Now, this is a hot penny stock on the major exchange, which comes with benefits. You don't have to pay for any of your transactions, buy your shares, sell your shares. It's free. You can trade pre-market, after-market. You can never do that with the OTC, and there's a lot of activity in those periods of time. Not to mention, there's a lot more money and a lot more volume up on the major exchange, as you would imagine. But most important to me are all those bloody rules they got up there on the major exchange that these companies have to jump through all the time. That mitigates the risk to me. That's one of the primary reasons I like trading penny stocks on the major exchange. They're just safer. So what is Curl Technology all about? Well, they tell us here that Curl Technology develops, manufactures, and licenses next generation carbon fiber thermal management technologies for batteries and electronic systems. Leveraging the company's roots in developing breakthrough cooling solutions for NASA deep space missions and backed by strong intellectual property portfolio, Curl enables leading aerospace, electronics, and electric vehicle manufacturers to make their products cooler, lighter, and safer for the consumer. You see NASA mentioned there. They have got a couple contracts with NASA. They've got one with the U.S. Army as well. Now, to understand what this company is doing, best place to do that is just to jump over to their website, curltechnology.com. Here's some of the companies that they're working with. NASA, Malasal, Serba Solutions, Lockheed Martin, Department of Transportation, Federal Aviation Administration, and I know they're working with the Army. Now, I've come over here particularly to share their products with you because the products really tell the story about what this company is doing. They've got about a half a dozen different products, and all of them are working in harmony and synergy with each other for one goal, to keep that lithium-ion battery running properly and safe. And if things go crazy, hopefully they can keep it in control. So we're going to take a brief look at each one of these products, and we see what each one does, then you'll understand what the company's all about. First product here is Cell Check. The Cell Check Modular Battery Management System platform is Curl's next generation battery safety technology for e mobility, energy storage, and fleet applications. Giving us some information over here about it, they say that Cell Check sensors capture and track a battery's full life history. Adverse incidents, including electrical, physical, and environmental events that may negatively impact the battery, causing risk to the user, the community, or a company. On contact, cell check users are presented with an instant internal battery health answer via their cell phone, showing warnings and alerts, or the good to go clearance, fueled by secure data access, Edge AI, and distributed intelligence. Cell check batteries begin life as the world's smartest battery and only get smarter, perpetually learning. Now, this is what's important. 
As local enterprise data or global field data is accumulated, collated, further analyzed, as intelligence is synthesized and distributed uniquely to users and devices in the form of Cell Check Edge AI. What they're saying is your battery is not all by itself. It's in a community. The AI that is monitoring your battery is monitoring a lot of batteries. And all that information is up in the cloud somewhere. And it can relatively compare all that information since we're working with lithium ion batteries. So if there's a car over here that has a problem similar as your battery is having, the AI will know the solution and bring it to you or tell you about it, whichever the case may be. The next product that they have, this is Safe Case. They also have Safe Sleeve. You can think of it as small and large, and they are customizable in sizes. These are used to mitigate thermal runaway, providing for safe and sustainable storage and transportation of lithium ion cells in battery packs. Now, what you've got here is a safe storage unit. You can ship in this or you can just store in this. They put all of their technology into this package so that when it goes in a truck or on a plane, if something goes wrong and one of those cells ignites and explodes, you could have a serious problem on your hands, especially in a plane, right? Well, this will actually contain that problem if it happens. It doesn't come out of that package. Now, this isn't just for car batteries. We're talking all lithium ion batteries, any kind. We use them in our smartphones, laptops, power tools. Yes, our electric vehicles. And every single one of them are all susceptible to the same potential dangers of overheating, self-igniting, overpressure, and even toxic or flammable gas venting. I had no clue. Curl SafeX product line, including Safe Case and Safe Sleeve, provides a comprehensive solution for the safe storage and transportation of batteries. These products incorporate Curl's advanced patented Thermal Runaway Shield. That's another product. We're going to take a look at it here in a minute. For efficient heat dissipation, which reduces the risk of battery overheating, self ignition, and overpressure. Safe case and safe sleeve products are versatile and easy to use. You can reuse them over and over again with customizable sizing to fit various battery configurations, making them an idea solution for a range of applications. And it has received approval by the DOT, the Department of Transportation. And I do believe the parcel service is now using these. So we can now start shipping batteries, which is opening up an entirely new market for this company. We have not been able to ship batteries and a lot of people want to ship batteries. And imagine if people are doing this behind everyone's back, sooner or later, we're going to have a situation. So if we do it the right way, everybody's going to own one of these. Now, I don't know. Maybe there's competition out there. Maybe somebody else has something, but their products are proven reliable through NASA's testings. So who are you going to trust? <laughs> that third product they've got is their thermal capacitor. Just jumping right on into this. This is a heat sink. This is where all the heat from the battery goes and then dissipates. You have all these little tiny fins in there so lots of air can get in there like your car radiator and cool it down. Curl's PCM heat sink technology is compact, reliable, and lightweight and has been utilized by leaders in the U.S. aerospace and defense industries, NASA and the U.S. Army. It is already inside NASA's X-38, the re-entry vehicle. It is inside the LEO flight, already inside Mercury Messenger satellite, and it is inside the NICER telescope on the International Space Station. Now, we didn't read about this. I should have touched on to it, but they have actually shipped batteries to the space station for laptops, and they sent them in their safe cases. So we know that you can ship them long distances and they work. They go on to tell us that at current estimates, the capacitor is cycled more than 10,000 times without breakage in various applications. Now, for a heat sink to work, you've got to get the heat from the battery to the heat sink. And you just don't do that with a couple wires and you just don't slap the heat sink on the battery. It's a little harder than that. So they invented thermoconductive carbon fiber material. 
this thing that looks like a filter, but I bet it's a lot harder. This goes up against the battery, so you have full, lots and lots contact. And then on the other side goes your heat sink. Full, lots and lots of contact. So all that heat from the battery goes right to the heat sink and then is dispersed. The next product, this is their Thermal Runaway Shield. And I don't know exactly how this works, but I can tell you what they say about it. It looks like this. It kind of looks like duct tape. And it goes around all the individual cells that make up a lithium ion battery. Now, this is no new concept. Batteries have always had multiple pieces to them. If you go out and buy one of those lantern batteries, the square ones that got the springs on the top, if you open that up, inside you will find, I don't know, about 40 AAA batteries. Batteries inside stacked on top of each other. But wait, there's more. Open up one of those AAA batteries and dump out what's inside. A lot of them have hearing aid batteries stacked on top of each other inside. This is a standard concept for building batteries. You just take smaller units, stack them on top of each other, and make bigger units. And that's exactly what they're doing with the lithium-ion batteries. Well, when any of these cells overheats, shorts, it explodes the top off. Boof! And you have gas come out, and boom, you have a fire start. And then what do you have? A chain reaction. This one sets off that one, sets off that one, and it looks like a fireworks factory. <laughs> and it's dangerous. It's very, very dangerous. So, again, I don't know exactly how it works, but by using their thermal runaway shield, it prevents the going on and on. It stops that moving from one cell, moving on to the next. And that is big. That is big. If you're going to have one cell explode, fine, but don't let every cell. And they say that these can wrap up from 10 units up to 4,000 units in a battery. Whew, that's a lot of units. Now, this next product isn't actually a product. It's more of a research tool. This is used to actually short batteries on purpose. <laughs> that's what it's meant for. They used to use a nail literally would hammer a nail into a battery to short it out. This does it in a lot safer way, and they use the information they get for research, how to make batteries safer. And the last product I'm a little confused about. I know what they say it does, but how do you use it? I don't understand that part. They tell us here, our cathode is composed of carbon fiber velvet, providing a means of gen generating powerful electron pulses by field emission from the tops of the carbon fibers. These devices have been used by numerous customers from varying industries, including the Air Force Research Lab, the Naval Research Lab, Raytheon, Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, and Bay Systems. The U.S. designed and produced cathodes can be customized for different applications, including the generation of microwaves, X-waves, and laser radiation. <laughs> That's what they do, but what do they use them for? To me, they look like nasal plugs or ear plugs or a button you put on your couch. It doesn't look like anything. So a little more research would need be done to figure out exactly what the purpose is of these. So getting an overview of what you've got going on here. Curl has got this passive propagation resistance solution. As I said, all their products are working in synergy with each other to keep these batteries monitored, operating properly, and if something goes wrong, notify you and keep it under containment. And they, this is not just a cut and paste sort of product. They will customize these products to whomever needs them, like NASA, very particular. Battery transportation. I think this is awesome, folks. This opens up a door to an entirely new market. You didn't have any way to ship batteries. Now you've got a way and everybody has to have one of these bags unless there's competitors out there that have them. And there it is. The proof of this that they work in fall of 2019, our packaging solution was utilized by NASA to safely ship and store laptop batteries to the International Space Station. How about that? Now we didn't get any information here except this. Turns out that 
the cloud computing, AI computing is probably going to need their services as well. AI is growing now at an enormous rate. Cloud computing is getting bigger and bigger. And the more computers and servers you put next to each other, the more heat you generate. When I was in the military on an aircraft carrier, I was on a USS America and a USS Saratoga. We had computer rooms deep inside so they could be protected. Well, it got hot deep inside there. So they had special air conditioning just to keep that room down to 62 degrees. So that's what we're looking at here. As the burgeoning 5G market explodes, the AI market explodes, cloud computing explodes, they're going to need cooling solutions. And this company thinks they can handle that. So that's going to be a whole nother revenue stream for them. So now you've got an idea of what this company does, right? Okay, let's go take a look at that stock now. What was the relative volume around the company today? Oh my God, <laughs> what a jump. Woo! Going from under 5 million to just under 125 million. You're looking at, uh, what is that? 25 times, roughly, her normal volume. 2,500% increase, and there was no decent catalyst today. I'm going to share that filing with you, but I don't think that's what caused this thing to run. Looking at the share structure for the company. Authorized share count, we got a nice round number there, a half a billion shares. They could put all those shares on the market. They could also use them for currency if they wanted to make a deal with another company. They can pay themselves with them. Lots of things you can do with shares. Right now, they have put out 127 million onto the open market. The insiders own the lion's share, more than twice as many as the float. They own 74 million shares. The float is not bad. We are down at 32 million. Now, don't be brainwashed into thinking you got to have a 7 million, 10 million, 12 million float to have a great float. No, if you're under 50 million, you've got yourself a great float. So she's looking good to me. Market cap for the company, we are just under 27 million. Financials for Curl, looking good. She's been growing fast and strong over the last four years. 2019, we had $830,000. No, not 830. We got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. By 2021, she had kicked that up to 2.4 million. That's a 300% increase. And at the end of 2022, we were just touching $4 million. And look at that profit margin. We are well over 50%. Looking at our quarterly reports. Well, those are looking good too. We had a little dip there, but for the most part, they are growing and growing. So much so that at the end of September 2023, we were at $3 million. Our annual for 12 months was 3.9, about $4 million. Now we've just had $3 million in three months. That's a million a month. At that rate, we'll be hitting $12 million. Looks like the profit margin has dropped though, hasn't it? We were over 50% on the annual. We're at about 35% here on the quarterly. Check out that balance sheet. Well, they got money in the bank to pay their employees, $1.1 million. Total assets, about $12.5 million. Total liabilities, whew, that was close, about $11.5 million, which still qualifies us for stockholder equity. We are holding $1.2 million worth. No deficit here. Taking a look at the disclosures. We got a lot of disclosures here. And I did go through a bunch of them because I was particularly wondering if they had been notified by the New York Stock Exchange about that price. It's under a dollar. Major exchanges have a criteria, a minimum bid requirement of one dollar. You go under a dollar for too long, they can kick you off of the major exchange down to the OTC. Now you do get a warning. You get six months to fix it. How do you fix it? You got to get the price up over a dollar, close over a dollar, 10 consecutive days. Then you're out of hot water. Everything's kosher again. So I didn't find that one. I was going through here. I did not find that notification, but I did find a notification. <laughs> Seems they have a 20 cent rule too. I was unaware of this. The New York Stock Exchange reached out to the company and told them that the price of their stock was under 20 cents for the last 30 days. Wow, talk about being nitpicky. And if they didn't have the price 
over 20 cents by August 12th, 2024, they had one of two solutions, either do a reverse stock split or go down to the OTC. Well, the good news is they got to up over it. We're at what? 32 cents right now. So we don't have to worry about that. The other filing I want to share with you is a form four that came out today. This isn't a catalyst. It is news though. The stock ran 100% without any catalyst. I don't understand it, but this is what came out today. A Form 4 is filed whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of the company's common stock. Now, they can do that in a lot of different ways, but we're primarily interested when they buy them or sell them. This is a sale. It was Ray Knowles, who is a 10% owner or more of the company. He sold shares. Two days in a row on the 21st and the 22nd, he sold about a million shares total together. Now we know he sold them because of this code right here, S for sale, P for purchase. There's a lot of different letters you're going to see, M, F, G, K. They all stand for something else, but not a purchase and not a sale. So I normally don't pay a whole lot of mind to them, but these are sales and he just sold about a million shares. Now to put things in perspective, he had 15 million before he started selling. So it's not like he was unloading, but why was he selling? Should we be concerned about this? It is a pretty big sale. Well, you see that footnote right there, that one? Normally you can find some sort of reason or explanation right here, explanation of response. They tell us here that Dr. Knowles, in order to make proceeds available for extraordinary medical expense obligations, sold some shares. There you go. Has nothing to do with the company. It is bad news for Mr. Knowles. Something's going on with him or somebody he knows, but not the company. So we don't really have to take regard with this. But as I said, I still have not found a notification about them being under a dollar. That I am still concerned about. Now, as you can see, we've got lots of news here and I really do want to tag into most of it. The only one we're not going to tag into is this one here where they secured new special permits from the United States Department of Transportation because I already told you about that. So we're going to start with the oldest piece of news and move forward. First piece of news came out March 8th. Curl Technology receives acceptance of their compliance plan by the New York Stock Exchange. Now this has nothing to do with the 20 cent rule. They've already fixed that. There are 32 cents. This has nothing to do with the minimum bid price requirement of a dollar. This has completely to do with stockholder equity. We just got done seeing they had $1.2 million in stockholder equity. Well, the minimum criteria is 6 million. We're a long ways away from that. And the problem with this is that it doesn't get fixed in a day or a week. It takes time to fix that problem. So the good news on top of all the bad news is that the New York Stock Exchange has given them plenty of time to fix this. They have got to June 20th, 2025, not 2024. So we have over a year to deal with this problem. But I still want you to keep in mind, we are under a dollar and I am sure somewhere that the New York Stock Exchange has contacted the company about this and they have to get that resolved. Next piece of news. This came out March 14th, the day the stock took off and went 100% from 11 cents to 22 cents before coming down. Curl Technology Group announces a strategic contract with NanoRacks for advanced space battery development. The company today announced in a landmark development, it has been awarded a pivotal contract exceeding $865,000 from NanoRacks, now part of Voyager space exploration segment. Curl has already achieved the first milestone of this contract by delivering the first article prototype battery at the end of 2023. This initial phase ensures Curl's battery technology will play a crucial role in powering next generation satellite applications during critical periods. Our partnership with Voyager Explorations team represents a significant win-win scenario. For Voyager, it brings Curl's cutting edge, safe and innovative battery designs to the forefront of space technology under an expedited schedule. For Curl, it marks the beginning of what we anticipate will be a fruitful relationship, paving the way for multiple program collaborations in the future. 
I see a lot of business coming their way. Next piece of news. This came out on the 19th. Curl Land's initial battery testing order for its safe case product with leading U.S. automaker. But they never tell us who the automaker is. The company confirmed its collaboration with a leading U.S. automaker. This partnership focuses on mitigating thermal runaway risks in EV battery modules through Curl's advanced safe case technology. With the surge in battery utilization across electric vehicles, aerospace, and other sectors, there's a critical need for scalable and secure transportation solutions in-house. You have these companies working with batteries. Not everything is in the same spot. Sometimes you got to send the battery over there or send the battery over there. Well, you need safe transportation. That's what they're doing right here. Curl's patented SafeX product line, encompassing safe case and safe sleeve, addresses this need by facilitating safe, efficient shipping of lithium batteries across an automaker's multifaceted network of engineering, design, and testing divisions. And the last piece of news. This came out a few days ago on the 21st. Curl approaches final milestone, an upsized U.S. Army contract for advanced battery prototypes. These are prototypes. Curl is inventing new products for these contracts. Curl Technology Group announces the receipt of an additional purchase order from the United States Army, increasing the total contract to $1.8 million. This latest order propels the project into its final phase, scheduled for completion August 2024. In the concluding phase, Curl will deliver two distinct prototypes of its innovative battery systems, each tailored to meet the rigorous operation demands of the U.S. Army. The final prototypes will leverage Curl's advanced energy management platform, Curl One Design Solutions, which integrates state-of-the-art safety measures and thermal management technologies. As the sole provider of cell screening technology for NASA, Curl continues to cultivate a solid foundation of trust while exhibiting sound technical expertise through its ongoing partnership with the U.S. Army. Those are two huge contracts. I'm expecting that NASA is just going to get bigger and bigger. I think we're going to be putting out more and more satellites. And for what the company is doing, we're going to need this in a lot of sectors. 5G, AI and cloud computing. We need it with EV cars. We need it with our phones. This cooling application is incredibly important for all technology that uses lithium-ion batteries. So I think this company has a great, strong future. And right now, the chart is looking just like that, strong. Welcome to my playground, where I have a lot of fun. This is my free trading platform, Think or Swim. We're taking a look at Curl Technologies, ticker KULR. We got this opened up to a one-day, one-year chart. And as you can see, she is in a serious downtrend. She's been in a tailspin for the entire year. Only now is she showing any signs of breaking free. We had a high back in July of last year of $1.10, that's what they say, and we got a low here of $0.10 cents in February. Now off of that low, she was climbing ever so slightly, but really she was just going sideways, waiting maybe for this 50. She got excited when she broke through it, came back down, and then took off. And now we are tagging the 200-day SMA way the heck up here, even though she's fallen back, that's very optimistic. Right here where the volume started is the 14th when the news came out about NanoRack and the deal that they made. And since then, our volume has been getting stronger. And it was very strong today. And look at our oscillators. Every single one of them is pushing up, going to the moon, and on fire. Our RSI is all the way up there at virtually 80 right now. That is a dynamite one-year chart, folks. Looking at our six-month, four-hour view. What? Our six-month high says it's $1.13. Didn't we just read the 52-week highs at $1.10? In any case, we hit this high in August of last year. There's our low. And off of that low, 
As I said, she was climbing slowly, but really just going sideways. She starts showing some interest in breaking out here. She got through the 200 here, tagged it there, a little break here, and then came out that news on the 14th, and she ripped 100%, going from 11 cents up to 22 cents. She was underneath the 200, broke the 200, and then spit out that long wick way up high. Then she came back down no lower than where she started. To me, this is a sincere token that she is ready to run, that she's looking for an excuse to break free and start climbing. She came down to her 50-day SMA, bounced off of that, and she has taken off. Now, what is it she's looking for? I said she's looking for an opportunity. Well, it could be a piece of news, but normally what it is is a flat 200-day SMA. Now, if we back this up, you can see we have some slant there, and there's still a little slant, but not much. That's why she got so high. She came back down, and now, right now, today and yesterday, she went completely flat, and she has risen to new highs at 42 cents there. All of our SMAs are in the right place here. Everything is looking great. All of our oscillators are still going to the moon, and our RSI is up there at 85 now. Woo-hoo! It's come down to our 20-day, one-hour view. So she's really just going sideways, a little rolling around, but not much to talk about, till we had this big rip right there, though she did come back down on top of her 200. She's not underneath it. Pushed away from that a few days ago, and she started riding that nine-day escalator. She did pull back yesterday, Friday, hitting the 50-day SMA and then launching up there to 42 cents, starting at 21 cents. You got a 100% jump there and a 100% jump right there. She came way back down here to about 28 cents, right on top of her nine-day SMA, perfect landing, and she just continued climbing and is climbing aftermarket right now. All of our SMAs are picture perfect. They're all turned up and starting to climb now. And our oscillators are still going to the moon and still on fire. RSI is up there at 78 right now. Let's come on down to our five day, five minute. So here's our low of just over 14 cents, hugging onto that 200 day SMA. Then we get a bounce. She launches on her 50 day, bounces on the 200, and then we get ourselves a rubber ball bounce. <laughs> what that is, is when the price goes underneath the SMA like a rubber ball in water. What's it going to do? It's going to come right back up and normally shoot out of the water. Well, that's what happened here. She went under the 200 crouching and then pounced real hard from 21 cents up to 42 cents falling back. And here after market, she is still climbing. All of our SMAs are looking really, really good. And... <laughs> Our oscillators are outstanding. All of them are still climbing to the moon. Our RSI here is in the 80 point. Now, what I want to do here for a little bit of perspective, whenever I have a major rip or a big dip, I like to grab my Fibonacci and poke the extremities, the top and the bottom of it, and find the middle. That's a big important part right there. I expect after a big rip for the price to fall, 50%. I expect that. So that's why you want to sell up here because it is normally going to fall at least 50% most of the time. So here we are at 50%. Well, she came through that. If she can stay above 50% on top of this line or anywhere above it, the chances of her continuing to climb are much stronger than if she falls below it. She came below it, landing on this SNR support and resistance. Now you see how she is hugging this SNR? This support is not attached to any historical price point. This is an algorithmic support and resistance that we're drawing up here, but the price respects them. You can trade using these. So here she is riding across this support. She bounced up to our 50% mark, fought to stay up there, launched up to the next level, stayed here. She is stair-stepping, folks. She is climbing right out of this box, and it looks like she's going to take off again. Everything looks sweet. And this company, to me, has a lot of potential. What they do, loads of people are going to need, from outer space to here on Earth, to our phones, to our cars, and now to 5G as well. I see a lot of potential growth in this company. 
Right now, the chart is looking good for a surge, for a run. You can probably get some quick gains now. But I do some more research and due diligence. I think you'll like this company for the long hold as well. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.